as an abstract expressionist through the 1950s. And I did my thesis for various reasons on uh, Marcel Duchamp and Francis Picabia. I became uh, the leading living expert on the work of Francis Picabia and Marcel Duchamp. I was using graphic design as the basic basis of my compositions. It's based on Mondrian, the vertical, the horizontal. And then to that, I added shapes, the cutout shapes of Matisse. Everybody's following the same ideas. Even Picasso is based on those ideas. After I left Mr. Sutnor's employee, I worked at Life magazine. And my basic job was uh, cropping photographs. <laughs> They had these great photographers. Even if the photographer was Cartier-Bresson, who said his work was never to be cropped it. <laughs> the first few years, I had a small studio, and I'd collected all this junk <laughs> from flea markets. But I didn't use it. I just loved the stuff. And uh, we moved into a big loft. I hired a group of graduate students to help me make the move. And the uh, kids were so tired, they just piled everything up in the front space. And I, the next day when I went in and nobody else was around, there was this big empty room with this stuff piled up. I thought the piles of junk were interesting. <laughs> and so, I recreated piles of junk and had the models take positions next to it. But I became known primarily as a rebel going against all my associates, my generation. Although I was totally rejected by traditional figure painters who thought I was, I was going by vision, not by rules. I never studied uh, classical. French drawing. Right, so I just, I'm just painting what I see. I wanted no more of meanings. I'd had enough of that, studying Duchamp and Picabia and art history. And uh, it just became a purely visual experience. And that's more or less my experience. I'm totally immersed in the visual experience and there's no meaning, nothing sexual, uh, men, women, whatever, same.